everyone and welcome back to my channel um, for those of you trying to get in you know a comfortable position for those of you who don't know me my name is Faith and I am kind of an overthinker and I feel like that doesn't even matter I wanted to talk to you today about um, your beliefs and how they might be the source of your unhappiness so for me personally I've grown up with um, a very strict set of beliefs and no strict amount of thoughts that have been passed on to me um, because of my family and um, what they believe in. So that's passed down to me just like everybody else. Um, but as I've grown up, as I've gone to college, I've seen what I believe evolve and I kept some of what my family believes but I also kind of changed it depending on my experiences and what I understood and what I've seen. So for me personally, I have um, very loose borders of what I believe. Like I'm not afraid of incorporating new thoughts and ideas into what I believe or I like to listen to everybody and like know what they're thinking and see if that makes sense to me and if that aligns with what I believe or if I if it challenges what I believe, which is also fine. But I feel like in, I don't know how it is around the world, but in American culture especially, people have very like set beliefs. They're like, this is how the world is. This is how this is. This is what it should be. And I feel like that can be very unhealthy and that causes people a lot of frustration and depression because if you think the world is one thing, and you're not willing to hear out other people or you're not willing to you know like try to see things another way i believe that it's dangerous and you either become so harsh in your interpretation that you end up discriminating against other people or making other people feel bad for thinking a different way than you do and i want to remind everyone that we're all in this human experience and we're all processing and seeing the world according to what has happened to us what we've experienced what we're doing, what our hopes are, what our dreams are, how we were raised, etc. So, yeah, you can have what you believe, but I feel like you should also be able to be open-minded and respect what other people have to say or what other people have gone through. That being said, I started reading um, a book called The Four Agreements. And for me personally, I have a master's degree and I'm currently um, trying to get into medical school. and it's like the more information I learn, the more that I realize like I don't know anything because it's like I thought I knew everything when I was like 16 and then I found out there was this whole world of knowledge, this whole world of information and it just there's every time you learn something you realize there, that there's so much more to be known. And so ever since like you know pursuing higher education and just learning more about things and people i feel like there's no way in the world i can know everything i can't even know a margin of things like i'm a black woman who's from african descent i don't even understand the entire black experience of being like an african-american who is a descendant of slaves like so if I can't even understand a demographic that I am usually grouped into, how can I understand everybody else's lives and everybody else's world and the pressures they're under? But back to the book, I was reading um, The Four Agreements, which is a Toltec, I hope I'm saying it right, a Toltec wisdom book. And they were talking about how um, people, human beings are conditioned from the time they were born. So like when you are a kid, um, you're not, you don't choose anything, you don't choose your family, you don't even choose your name. And you are basically taught this set of, these sets of beliefs. Now the whole idea of the book, well the part, part of the idea of the book is that whatever you accept is what you're making an agreement to. So if someone tells me like, let's say, okay, so society has categorized me as black, right? So if I agree to that, that's an agreement I made with myself. And when, once you make an agreement with yourself, that's how you go about your life. So now I'm going about my life as a black person. So they were saying how you're conditioned from the time that you are an infant. And if you're a good girl, you get a reward, girl or boy, and or whatever. If you are good, you get a reward. If you are bad, you get a punishment. And this is how we learn um, how to behave in society and which 
actions and behaviors are acceptable, which is normal. Like you hear this in all types of psychology um, theories and books. But also it talks about how when you get to a certain stage, you feel too much pressure and you start to revolt against these expectations, which is when kids start saying no to everything. And that's like supposedly your way of holding on to your um, your freedom and your individuality by saying no. But then again, you're punished. And after you pass that no phase, that's where you get to the phase where you are auto conditioning. I believe that was the word they called it. And that's when you are more aware of how people respond around you. So now you don't need mom and dad to tell you, oh, this is how you should be. This is, you're doing this, this is a good girl. you're a good girl or boy, you're doing that, you're bad. Um, and you start to basically observe from your environment what are the expectations of you and you try to live up to those expectations. And those expectations become agreements. And basically we're seeking um, attention basically from other people and approval. So let's say you want to aspire to um, higher education or you want to aspire to a certain level. It's like, like for me personally, I'll use myself as an example. I want to become a doctor. And um, being a doctor is a pretty altruistic profession, even though you do make money and you do have prestige in your um, society. So it's like, basically challenging the book basically challenges everything you believe or think because it's saying that this was forced upon you by other people and it might not be what you think exactly so do i want to be a doctor because i genuinely like helping people yes which is what i believe and i don't i don't like to see other people suffer that's why i want to be a doctor because i want to be able to um intervene in those situations and not be helpless However, looking at it from the perspective of like societal expectations, do I want to be a doctor because my dad and my mom want me to be a doctor? Do I want to be a doctor because then I'll be heralded as a hero? I'll be higher up in society? Do I want to be a doctor because it pays more? What, like, it's like you're, you have to really look into yourself and see um, what these agreements you've made are and if they are worth keeping or if it's time to let go which i thought is really really interesting because for me i don't if you watch my videos i don't really say things like definitely i say i think or i feel and that's because i looked at it from everyone's perspective and tried to see if it made sense to me but i feel like in our society we make these very rigid agreements and they might be passed down to you from other people to be a success or to be educated or not to, you know, not to date this person, not to date that person, not to shame your family, not to, not to drop out of school or to pursue this specific career type because that's what we've been taught is the right way. But I would like to challenge you guys to maybe try to evolve um, your way of thinking or like reconsider is this something that I want for myself or is it something that um, society or my family or someone has pushed on me. Um, I do it because I've seen like I have friends who who try to live up to their family's expectations and for me I in, within my family I'm like the black sheep of the family I'm the one that doesn't like being told what to do like doesn't doesn't follow what I'm supposed to do honestly and I just do it seems like I do what I want but I also um that's not necessarily true I do do what I want but I do what I believe it's right and I do what I believe is like, beneficial to me without hurting others significantly like obviously people's feelings will be hurt sometimes but I try to do what's right according to technically the agreements that I made but I know a lot of people that are in situations where they don't want to do something, but they're doing it so that other people feel good. And I respect that. And I think it's a very like genuine way, way to think because you're basically like a martyr. You're putting your own happiness and well-being aside so that other people can feel happy and comfortable. But at the same time, you only get one life and it's nothing's nothing's given and life is not that long 
so maybe it's time to start living for you and to take the pressure loose off of yourself because according to the book and this is it's what I believe but also I'm not the best with words so I try to read books to see if you know I can get it together but according to the book it's um so now that you're auto regulating or auto conditioning you start to feel upset and you start to feel depressed because you don't think that you're hitting these landmarks or um, living up to the standard or the agreements that you've made for yourself and it's no longer agreement from society it's agreement it's um not pressure agreement pressure from society it's pressure that you are putting on yourself and i am someone who puts myself under a lot of pressure but i also at times know when to pull it back where i have really good people in my life who tell me I want to do that. But if someone doesn't have that and they're putting constant pressure on themselves, um, it definitely gets hard. I know people go spiraling into depression. It's a common thing with medical school students and um, Ivy League students where you put so much pressure on yourself that if you do fail to perform, you just like, you don't know what to do and you can't take it anymore. And I feel like that's also going on right now. Everyone's at home, everyone has to be to feel productive. Like I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And some people have lost their job, which might have been their sense of identity. And um, it's a rough time for a lot of people. And people are lonely. Obviously, socialization is important. But I also want um, people to know that if you have a job or if you had a job, where things have changed in your life and you're looking for your own identity, make sure you do, um, I would recommend, I guess, doing your own introspection and seeing what's important to you and seeing if this may be a time for you to remold your expectations of yourself and of other people because what else is there in my life? Honestly, you make your impact, you live life to its fullest, and then eventually we die and we either go somewhere or we don't go anywhere nobody really knows for sure i believe you go somewhere so how can you make the most of this life my opinion is that you reform new agreements reform yeah you form new agreements you, you consider everything you know everything you think you know um get rid of, i would say get rid of the sense of tribalism that's going on like over here it's Democrats, Republicans, Liberals, and Conservatives, <laughs> um, but no one's realizing that you're just seeing the world from your experience, and until we can, you know, understand each other or try to understand each other, we're all going to be stuck in these weird little places where we think we're right and everyone else is wrong, and no one cares about us, or I'm, my, I'm out for my own best interest, which simply isn't true everybody's out for their own best interests but we can come to a collective decision um, that benefits everyone <sighs> i'm talking a lot and i don't know you might be bored we're at 13 minutes now but how cute does my hair look i didn't do anything special i used to get out the braids because i had a wig when i had a wig um so yeah just reevaluate the agreements you made with yourself and use that to move forward. A good part of um, this story in the book was you have a child who is happy and loves to sing, right? And let's say their parent had a bad day and the child is singing their lungs out and the parent's just trying to have some rest. Before this instance, if you ask the kid who, who's a good singer, are you a good singer? The kid will probably ecstatically say, yeah, I'm a good singer, I like to sing, let me show you. Um, however, if that parent lashes out that one day and says, oh, I need you to shut up, you're such a terrible singer, that's an, if that kid accepts it, that's an agreement that they can do. Like, okay, I'm not a good singer, I'm a terrible singer, I shouldn't sing anymore. Now, from that moment on, if you ask the kid, who likes to sing, who's a good singer, the kids, the kids are like, oh no, I'm not a good singer, I don't want to sing anymore. And you see that with a lot of adults, like people say, oh, I can't draw, I can't do this, I'm not good at that. Um, and these are all agreements that you made with yourself. So I would recommend getting rid of all these negative agreements and trying out new agreements, like I'm beautiful, I'm smart, I am successful, I am hardworking, I'm 
consistent I may not be perfect but I'm working hard every day to get toward my dream and once you accept these new agreements it might change the way you look at your life it might change the way you express yourself it might change the way you interact with others um just something to consider i'm gonna finish this video with my favorite quote it's probably the deepest quote i've ever heard and one that i carry close to my heart the quote is if you do not like where you are move you are not a treat thank you and have a great day